that in that way we can um, um, sort the columns. We can also easily construct a function to, to check if our input matrix is sorted. Um, let's let's um, but let's just look here at an example. So we have here an unsorted column, and we see that the um, fourth column here has um, the the, the fourth character is the most frequent one since it appears in three taxa, um, while the fifth um, the fifth um, character appears in now in no taxa taxon, for example. So the ordered version would would be like that. Um, note in this particular example we have here um, two columns that are exactly the same. So this would violate the the above. Um, Assumptions, but for for the ordering, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, also note that when two um, columns have the same number of of uh, of ones, then the ordering is sort of arbitrary here. Um, then um, next um, we come to this um, so-called shared um, prefix property, and that is the um, crucial property that allows us to um, to construct the um, our algorithm and basically that um, that um, property says us that when we compare two taxa in an ordered input matrix like here and then we look for the character to the most right that um, both taxa exhibit um, so that would form um, taxon one and two the both um, taxa possess the character uh, one, but then afterwards they are different. Then the um, then the um, shared prefix property says that when our conditions, that when there is a perfect phylogeny, then all characters before must be equal between the two taxa. Um, so this is for a very um, yeah, important um, Property for for our algorithm because it allows us to um, to um, insert the rows of the um, um, to to insert the the um, rows the taxa um, incrementally into the fellow genetic tree without um, um, violating any of the properties. So um, let's see that in action. So we uh, we. Um, start by creating an empty phylogenetic tree in which we insert the root node and then we take the first taxa, taxon of the input matrix and create a, a pass from the root to the taxon in such a way that um, um, that we insert from left to right for each of the characters um, in, in this taxon. Um, R1, uh, we, we insert the corresponding labeled edge and we also um, insert in the end uh, a leaf. Um, then, um, and then the, the rest um, works inductively. So we assume in each uh, iteration that we already constructed the phylogenetic tree for the first um, F taxa. Um, and now we um, add the F plus one um, taxon to the tree, and we do that by first traversing the um, the tree um, along the um, along the path from the root to the um, uh, to the edges um, with the labels that this taxon has until the first mismatch, uh, and then afterwards we start inserting new um, vert New, new vertices and nodes, um, new vertices and edges into the um, into the um, phylogenetic tree. Um, and since we have the shared prefix property, we have the guarantee that um, after we come to the first mismatch, none of the none of the um, uh, edges that we insert is already um, corresponds to um, an edge that is labeled with that um, character. Um, split that up um, in the source code into two um, functions. The first one is this traverse phylogenetic tree until the first mismatch. And um, 
that takes as an input um, a, a row. And then we go along the tree and we return the last um, we, we return the, the last um, node in the graph before the mismatch. And we also return the character um, um, the character that was um, uh, that was producing the mismatch. So the, the character of an edge that um, is still not in the graph. Um, and then um, to construct the phylogenetic tree, um, we first check the input properties that um, the matrix um, allows for a phylogenetic tree, that none of the columns and rows are duplicated and that it's sorted. And then by, we start by um, initializing an empty, um, empty tree, we add the root to it, um, we um, add the label, uh, we, we carry around a, a dictionary for the for the labels of the nodes and vice versa, and we also carry around a, a dictionary for the um, um, for the labels of the edges. And then we uh, we go um, over each taxon in the matrix. First, we traverse until the first mismatch. So we have the the last node in the tree and the first um, column of, of mismatch, the first character of mismatch. Um, and we know until now um, by our invariant property sort of that um, that our the, the tree that we constructed so far is indeed um, still a phylogenetic tree. And um, now we insert a new um, a new node and a new edge for this um, um, for this character of mismatch. Um, so we do that by um, uh, by um, yeah <coughs> saving this last um, this last um, uh, vertex in the tree. And now we go over the remaining uh, remaining characters. We check if the if the um, if that um, taxon possesses that character. Um, if yes, then we um, uh, construct um, Construct a new node where we change exactly um, uh, where we ch change exactly um, the character from zero to one um, on that posi specific position of the column we are just iterating of. Then we we add um, this we add this new vertex into the um, phylogenetic um, tree and. Um, we append a new, um, we, we label that this way. Um, and uh, we add also an edge from the, um, from the previous um, node in, in the graph to the newly created node. Since we just created this node, um, um, we are guaranteed to not induce a, a cycle in the graph because it has, has no outgoing edges and it has gets only one incoming incoming edge so indeed we have um, uh, we still have here the um, um, the tree property um, uh, guaranteed and then we also label this newly created edge um, with the character that um, changed um, between the arc node and the the test node um, and um, <coughs> Um, since we do that for all the characters in the uh, the remaining characters um, in the row, we are also guaranteed that um, that in the end this third property holds that for any taxon, the characters that label the edges along the path from the root to the leaf uh, row specify the characters of the row simply because we. Um, we iterated over all the columns um, after we traversed the tree. Um, then uh, um, we also have that um, um, each of the um, characters um, labels exactly one edge um, because of the um, shared prefix property that we mentioned before. Um, and then finally, um, after we inserted all of these edges, we um, add the leaf for that um, taxon, meaning we, we add 
one edge where none of the characters changes and um, the, the um, appender to the to the graph as well um, again since it has only an incoming um, edge it's a leaf node and we also um, don't add this leaf to this um, uh, to this um, dictionary here which uh, which guarantees that never in this function there will be any outgoing edge um, inserted from that um, from that node so it's guaranteed that this leaf will stay a leaf also in further iteration and um, with that what's the third property is guaranteed that each taxon labels exactly um, one leaf um, and then um, we're done we return the phylogenetic tree the labels and the, the edge labels and um, you can see here a small example we have um, four, four taxa here um, for characters and then the the root node is the all zero sequence and we say see we have four uh, we have all the we have four edges labeled with the corresponding characters and we have um, um, four leaves representing each each one one of the rows of the um, 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 of the input matrix and then finally one word about complexity so we saw we had the loop over the taxa and the inner loop about uh, over the characters so the complexity is, um, is linear in each of them when the other one is, is fixed